Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of No Buts About It. I am your host, Josh Butts. I'm in my dining room in Indiana. Chuss is in his basement in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we have breaking news. We're going to just talk about the conference, the conference championships and our reactions to that for an hour. But holy cow, the NFL media blew up right before we came on. And Chuss, your Steelers hired their Matt Canada replacement. They decided to go out of house. They said, we're going to go get someone, bring some new blood into Pittsburgh, uh, change up this offense that has been struggling. Uh, and they went and they got former Falcons head coach, Arthur Smith, as their offensive coordinator. And I'm not going to say anything. I just want to hear your reaction to this. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, this, I, I don't like the look on your face with this because you're just like really like cheesing at the idea of the Steelers downfall, which is fine, but you know, the Steelers still find a way to go nine and eight with this or 10 and seven. But, um, uh, my initial reaction was, uh, very unpleasant. Uh, I looked, I got really angry when I saw it pop up on my Instagram feed called my dad who is a uh, fan of the show as well as a uh, former uh, guest co-host on the show as well um we talked about it we both were very uh disapproving of it i also texted connor who was also a guest co-star at one point on the show while josh was absent in october and he also had said as a joke that if the steelers were to sign arthur smith to and he said this to his dad that if they were to sign Arthur Smith, he would not watch Steelers football. And he doesn't act. I don't genuinely think he meet. I don't think he actually like Connor. Gonna, Connor got to go through. I don't know if he's actually going to go forth with that. But because you know we've got a fantasy, he's got a fantasy football league to run, so he he can't be doing that. But um, nonetheless, um, I, I'm a little disappointed, but I feel like in a way this is probably the best option out of all of the people that we have interviewed because all the people that we have interviewed probably could arguably be arguably have been worse possibly. I mean, you, you, are talking about interviewing like coaches and coordinators and stuff from Carolina who had the worst offense in the league, which it, like, you know, we had a bad offense, but we were like 30th, 31st Carolina was just like 32. It's like, why would we want to go from, you know, what we had to even possibly worse? I mean, it could be better, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that was the right move. But when it comes to Arthur Smith, on the other hand, like I know he was an offensive coordinator in Tennessee. I believe it was during that, what, that strong Titans run heavy um, offense that they had going into the AFC championship. Um, I believe it would have been. I believe that's correct. Yeah. So, and um, I, I think that in a way, I feel like any coordinator could have figured that out and done something like that i mean it's not like rocket science to just be like oh king henry is blowing up this year and he's a destructive running back let's just run it like most of the game and like orchestrate plays based on running backs i mean i don't think it's that difficult especially when the team was built off of king henry during that run now don't get me wrong they obviously used ryan Tannehill and some of their offensive weapons at the time and whatnot but i i do think that um Arthur Smith as a coordinator wasn't really that like significant, but obviously Atlanta thought it was, and they brought him into Atlanta and we kind of saw what he did with his offensive weapons when he was there. And um, obviously he didn't, and we've talked about this on the show before. He didn't really utilize his like young guys, his, future stars to their utmost potential and a lot of times they were almost just non-existent uh we had seen you know i think Bijan robinson you know drake london a lot of these guys just getting the most random either plays or just not being given the ball when you have like cordell or uh, you know cordell patterson is that is that you know is that right yeah um, Bijan blocking for cordell patterson you have kyle pitts blocking for jonu smith those yeah things. It's, yeah it's just like why when kyle pitts is supposed to be a generational t- tight end which 
I don't know at this point because they've pretty much wasted it, wasted his years of trying to gain that experience. Um, Bijan, luckily, he still has time, but it's still one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, maybe you split it up a little bit, kind of do what Detroit was doing, where they were trying to figure out what they were doing with Gibbs, and they finally figured out a two man uh, running back game worked. But Atlanta never figured it out, and I don't think Patterson is is that type of you know running back it kind of scheme up in like like they do up in Detroit where it's like you have Gibbs and Montgomery Montgomery is a very good running back and Gibbs is a very good running back I feel like Cordell Patterson on the other hand is a little older so I mean it's kind of hard for him to run the same as like a David Montgomery you know if you're comparing a Gibbs to a Robinson type thing but in my opinion I, I don't really think this is a good move for the Steelers I personally don't I mean maybe I'm just you know, very angry about everything. But um, I mean, I'm a little, like I said, I was a little disappointed over just, you know, the season. And then we kind of started lighting it up. We had an okay showing against Buffalo. Um, Definitely thought it could be better. And I've talked about it on the show before. But um, but when it comes to Arthur Smith coming in, I really hope he changes something because if it's kind of like the lackluster performance he had as a head coach in Atlanta, we're going to be in for another one of those rough two to three years where it's just going to be up and down type offenses. Because I feel Arthur Smith did win games. I mean, he went seven and 10, I think, what, all three seasons, I think, right? In in the NFC South. Yeah. The worst division in football. So, I mean, and and the team is not bad. I mean, they put up offense. It's not like they didn't, but like, I feel like they definitely could have done more. I mean, he's, he's definitely, I I'm going to say he's definitely going to be better than Matt Canada, but I don't think he's going to put us on a level of. I I think he is. I think any coordinator is better than Matt Canada. I don't want Matt Canada back in there, but I, I mean, I think that he won't use the players correctly. So I don't, I don't think he will. What what about like what happens? I mean, we already saw it this year with Matt Canada, and I've, I don't know the name of your interim OC, but uh, George Pickens, he wasn't being used. He got upset multiple times when he wasn't being used. He didn't feel like his talents were being utilized, which is fair. What happens when he's asked to block for, I, I don't know, some random wide receiver that you guys bring in or – He's asked to do something stupid like that in Arthur well, Smith's offense. Well, I, I think George Pickens is kind of um I, I think the thing with George Pickens that I've I've kind of realized is that he's willing to do things if he's a part of the action. The problem was is like like during the Matt Canada offense and stuff, he wasn't targeted. It was mostly De- Deontay Johnson, jet sweeps, you know, a lot of very lackluster performances. Maybe you put that on Kenny, maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. But kind of towards the end, you kind of saw George Pickens blocking a little bit more in some of those last three games. And he, I think, I, if I remember correctly, it, it was either him or Warren. But I know that they blocked for Calvin Austin third whenever he went in for a jet sweep. And I know that George Pickens, I know for a fact, I remember watching him block for something. So I don't think it would bother him necessarily, as long as it's not a situation where it is like a Matt Canada, where George Pickens isn't getting targeted. Like if Kenny Pickett is going to be, you know, obviously he'll probably be starting at the beginning of the season next year. If you have him just constantly throwing to Deontay Johnson and George Pickens is wide open on a, like a, you know, a fadeaway and you don't chuck it up to him, then yeah, I mean, George Pickens is going to continue to get mad and he's probably not going to block because he's going to be like, well, I'm not being utilized. Why am I going to put in the effort that I need to? So in which I think is a downfall downfall of a player to keep that mentality. But in a way, you know, sometimes you kind of don't blame him because we've seen what he can do. He's a really, really good player. You just need to like bring him out of his shell. You need to throw it to him. I mean, he's not going to catch everything, but no great wide receiver is going to catch everything unless they're like hot. And the problem is, is George Pickens this season, it wasn't, I mean, wasn't getting the target. So he obviously couldn't heat up like some of these like wide receivers, like Amon Ra, who's getting like eight or nine receptions a game, you know, type thing. So, and George Pickens only got like three or four. I, I I don't know, unless it becomes like a consistent thing where it becomes frustrating, where it's like, oh yeah, Pickens, we're just going to continuously use you to block. Then yeah, I I think he's probably not going to block. 
But I, I don't know how that'll change everything. I don't know how that'll change the complexion. And who knows? Maybe Pickens will request a trade at that point, which might throw everything in the fire because at that point it's like, all right, well, Arthur Smith just made freaking uh, George Pickens request a trade. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it, at this point you kind of just – you kind of just throwing something at the wall and just seeing if it sticks or not, because you don't really know what's going to happen with this dude. Cause like I said, you, it's a different coordinating thing when you're in Tennessee and you're focusing a lot on the run game. We have two decent running backs. We're trying to figure out our passing game, which they never really figured out down in Atlanta with them swipping around Desmond Ritter and T Taylor Heineke and trying to figure out what to do over there. So I'm not feeling real confident about this move. I'm not going to lie to you, Josh. <laughs> Not, not lying, not lying. I'm not, I'm not real confident about this. I don't know how it's going to go. I, I, for some reason, I, I, I thought at one point, like sometime in this, in this uh, decade, we could go like 12, like 11 and six or 12 and five, but I, I think we're stuck in nine and eights and 10 and sevens for the next couple of years. I'm not, I'm not looking too hard because apparently they didn't want Byron Leftwich, which I think is strange because, you know, I think Byron Leftwich could have been an interesting an interesting coordinator. Um, and uh, I also, you know, I think that there could have been other options that they may have been able to explore, but maybe, maybe I, I mean, granted, I don't know who would have been even like an option. And obviously there's like really, really terrible coordinators out there that you don't want to bring in either, but I don't know. What do I know? I guess. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see how this plays out, but I mean, you, you, e either way, I, I've kind of just accepted the fact that we will probably still beat the Cincinnati Bengals twice this season. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I, we'll see. I mean, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Uh, like I said, I can't really see Mike Tomlin having a losing season with this. I mean, heck, if he can have winning seasons with Matt Canada, I feel like he can have a winning season at this point with anybody. Um, but apparently, according to my dad, who probably listens a lot to the uh, the radio, because I don't remember where he said he heard this. He talked about this on the phone today, um, and I'll double check it. But if it is true, it's kind of worth noting. But um, Art Rooney obviously said that, um, you know, obviously they were talking about extensions and stuff. And he said that uh, he's he's fully supports Mike Tomlin. And he um, it wants to give him like a like a longer term extension or whatever. However, he's tired of losing in the playoffs. So, and if that is a true statement, which I'm sure it is, because you know if you heard it on the radio, they're not going to report a lot of false news unless you're uh, Mark Madden, who likes to stir the pot. Um, I think that's an interesting statement. Now, I don't think they'll fire him. So, uh Shout out to my boy, Australia. I don't, I don't think they're going to fire him. Dealers but, Nation Australia, shout out. Yep. But um, I do I do, um, I do, do wonder uh, what that could mean, more or less. Maybe maybe more offensive coordinator turnovers or defensive coordinator turnovers. Maybe they try to shop. Other, I don't know. But it's interesting. It's interesting because I don't expect a playoff win this season, you know, coming up next season, I guess. I, I, I say this as your friend. And as a football podcast host, I think the Steelers fan bandwagon is about to be in for hell. I think you're going to see a lot of quarterback turnover soon. Yeah. The running back situation could get weird. We could see people starting to get mad on defense. We could see some wide, uh, wide receiver controversy that I think, I mean, we're, I already know at some point someone is going to be like Charlie day with that meme where he's like drawing the conspiracies together. And they're going to be like, Derek Henry's a free agent. Arthur Smith was the offensive coordinator during Derek Henry's best season in uh, Tennessee. That means Derek Henry is a Pittsburgh Steeler, And that's going to be like, that's going to blow up at some point. Oh, Our I can't wait. I, oh, I can't wait for that because why would we need Derrick Henry when we have Najee and Warren? And I know people are like, oh, Najee's not good. Well, he still had over a thousand yards rushing. And I think he had over a thousand yards rushing over the last three or four seasons. So it's not like this dude's bad. He just doesn't get the runs as explosive as like an Isaiah Pacheco or even like a Jalen Warren. So uh, what are you going to replace Najee? What, what are you going to do? Trade him? I don't, I, I don't uh, Someone I know. is going to say Derek Henry. I, I know, but I, I'm, shoot, I'm shouting this now so that when time comes up and people start yelling about this and put it on that you want to come back to this, come back to this episode, Josh, when we're done, 
with this. And then in March or, you know, whenever the free agency starts, make sure to clip this when rumors start coming up that Derrick Henry is going to be coming up because it's not going to happen. There's no need for it unless we trade one of our running backs away, which I don't think is reasonable considering Derrick Henry is probably going to want a lot of money. And I don't know if we want to spend all that money on Derrick Henry when we have other points of interest that we need to focus on, such as a center. I'm going to start the rumor right now that Derrick Henry is taking a pay cut veterans minimum to play for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh-huh. Cause... Yeah. Uh-huh. I think I everybody's, like whoever, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, um, but... I think rumor has it that, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Travis Kelsey, um, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Christian McCaffrey to the Bengals would be nice. Yeah. I think all of these guys are going to be coming to the, the Bengals, uh, okay. organization okay. on, on pay cuts. I, I also heard Tyree kill is going to be leaving Miami. Uh, joining uh, Joe Burrow up in Cincinnati as well. Um, I'm also hearing reports that um, TJ Watt is still staying with the Steelers because he doesn't <laughs> want to join the, the Cincinnati Bengals. But uh, Max Crosby is deciding to trade himself to the Cincinnati Bengals for future considerations. So, okay. so yeah, it looks like you guys are just going to have a great team over the next 25 years. Ravens will still somehow win the North. Yeah. <laughs> Bengals will go 10 and 7. <laughs> Ravens will go 14 and 3 again. Let's uh move on to another big coaching related news story and that is Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator. Lions fans were freaking out, understandably so because they thought he was leaving. This was their last chance to ever make a Super Bowl. They lost and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. I teased uh, why I think Dan Campbell made the right decision uh, in a short. So some of you might be here for that. We're going to get to that. But first, Ben Johnson has announced, hey, Washington, Seattle, I ain't coming to be your head coach. I'm staying here in Detroit with MCDC, and we're going to run it back. We're going to a Super Bowl next year. This wasn't our year, but I've got a plan. And everyone was saying Ben Johnson – to Washington was a done deal. But then Adam Schefter came out, I think, on Friday and said, hey, hold, 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 hold your horses. Maybe not. And now we've got another Bill Belichick situation where we thought we knew where the coach was going to go, and they've turned around and ran the opposite direction. So um, what what do we got here, Chuss? What are we looking at? Um. I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that Johnson's returning. I, I think that this is a very good move for the Lions or just in general. And I, I like the idea of saying, you know, if, if he actually did say he had a plan, I don't know if that's just your, your typical Josh. Me. I assume he has a plan. Yeah, but if he has a plan, that kind of, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. That, that's a really strong mentality because I do think the Lions are a very phenomenal team. I mean, I, I really do. I think they, they, they fell apart a little bit in that game against the 49ers, but we all know the 49ers are never to be taken lightly this season. I mean, you, when you think they're down and out, they're always going to find a way to come back and win. They're a really, really good, solid team. Um, they're really going to probably give Kansas City a run for their money because everyone thinks that Kansas City is going to win because of Taylor Swift. But that, this isn't about them yet. Uh, this is about uh, Mr. Johnson over there, Ben Johnson over in Detroit. But um, I think this is awesome for Detroit. I, I really think Detroit fans, I'm sure, are really excited and they're really happy to have him back. I'm, I mean, I'm excited to see him come back for another year um, because I feel like this is unfinished business. I mean, they were so close to winning that NFC championship just to fall short. I really think they're going to have a lot to get done and maybe they'll have some pieces that they'll fill in and maybe they'll be an even better team going into next season. And that'll be even more fun to watch, especially if Detroit makes a, another like crazy, maybe a first seed run type thing where, you know, I'm not saying it could happen, but you never know. I mean, these are, these are situations where it could happen. I mean, I think Goff's you know, playing pretty well. He's finally found himself and I think the wide receivers are good. I, I think that the running back game is stellar. I think your defense might need a little couple of tweaks, but I, I really don't think the team is that bad. Um, but for an, from an offensive standpoint, he's in good shape and he, he really should what the offense could do. I mean, heck, he carried my fantasy football team. He was he was a part of that carrying of my fantasy football team. After all, I had Sam Laporta, I had Amon Ross St. Brown, and David Montgomery. 
and all three of them I relied on for fantasy points every week. And sure enough, I would get those fantasy football points, and I did win the championship. So I'm excited to see what this offense does next year. I think this is great, but it does bring up that question for Washington and Seattle. What now? I mean, you know, Bill Belichick's probably not going to go over West, but is he going to Washington? <laughs> That's well, I, I, I mean, at this point, or or in the idea that maybe he's just not going to get signed. I think at this point, it might just be safe to say he's probably not going to get signed as a coach. I feel like at this point, but well, so Peter Schrager and the and uh, McCordy and Kyle Brandt and all those on uh, Good Morning Football, they were talking. They're saying, Bill. We've seen him on college game day. He might just go into TV for a year. And he created a list that I have here on my phone of things that Bill Belichick could do. Uh, Number five is fishing show with Randy Moss. I'd watch. Number four. Wait, wait, wait. wait, Back up. Why why a fishing show? Does he fish? Yeah, they both like fishing. Both are big fishing fans. All right. And he's uh, okay. Uh, Okay. I, I I think it'd be pretty funny. I mean, I, they could have a fishing show, but like, what is the basis of it? Like, would it be like, would it be him talking about like life stories with Randy Moss, like NFL stories, yeah. or would it be like a comedy, like reality TV show type thing where Bill Belichick like accidentally falls off the boat and then they're like, ah, oh, beep. And then they're like, cameras are running no. over to see what happened. And it's Bill Belichick, like going like this he's like i think there's an alligator in the water and it's like this giant thing and then they cut to commercial and everyone's like is bill belichick gonna die by an alligator in the water like what is this no, type this ain't of survivor movie? this is just a calm like this is casting hey randy remember when i came to your halloween party as a as a pirate oh shoot that's a big one get that yeah that was fun yeah, he's reeling in gets the fish that's that's what this I, would be i, I don't know I, I think that i don't know i don't know if i'd be that interested in it this, to be this honest list, but as i get through the rest of these you're going to realize it's not that serious uh, uh num- number four is patriots podcast with bill burr uh, hey you know what that might actually be a lot of fun for new england fans i mean i wouldn't listen but i'm sure that would be fun number three coach cast with nick saban and pete carroll so you had the Manning cast. Now we're getting the coach cast. Yeah, that, that'll be, that, that's a competition right there. Number two is just called 80s and 90s giant stuff with Bill Parcells, Phil Sims, and Lawrence Taylor. Nah, boo. <laughs> I don't want that. Uh, and then Peter Schrager's number one thing for Bill Belichick to do this year is co-host Red Zone with Scott Hansen. Interesting. But that's what that's we don't know where Bill Belichick's going. We know that Ben Johnson's going to Detroit. Washington has now got Mike McDonald they could go after. They're in Detroit today talking to Aaron Glenn, and they were planning on talking to Ben Johnson, but obviously that fell through. They're talking to Aaron Glenn, the Lions defensive coordinator. Rabel is still out there. Um they could go the Carolina route and hire some someone shocking like Dave Canales, like the Panthers hired one year as an offensive coordinator, and now he's a head coach. Uh, let's see what – I mean, Washington. The speedster, the quickster, the <laughs> speedrunner. New uh, – I mean, you got new ownership. We've got – the NBA is basically running the Washington Commanders at this point. With uh, – they've just brought in the – executive who helped build that golden state warriors super team a few years back yeah to work I on that. this team uh they got i, I don't uh, think i i think nba and uh, nfl are very different were. because the problem with the nba is you're focusing on like five positions in the depth players whereas like when you're trying to rebuild an nfl team you have to worry about every single position and their depth players so it's like you know, I don't even know how many positions total there are. Like, because you're even talking about special teams, technically, because it's just special teams. Mm-hmm. Then you have offensive players, so you're going to need backups, backup quarterbacks, running backs, linemen, wide receivers. And then on the front end, like on the opposite end, you're going to need backup linebackers, you know, rushers, you know, left end, right end, ROLB, LLB, and then middle linebackers, cornerbacks, free safety, strong safety, and your special teams. And you're going to need all depth backup players. 
that's a lot. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. I mean, they could build a super team, but I think it's going to take a lot more than a couple of years like they did with Golden State. I think it's going to take a lot longer than that because I've been trying to rebuild Carolina on Madden for the last seven seasons. Carolina is impossible to rebuild right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tepper won't spend the money Trust needs. Okay, well, I've been spending the money. I have Micah Parsons on the Carolina Panthers right now, and he we are still not winning anything. We keep losing in the divisional. And I don't know why. So it it takes a while. I think I think that I, I've been struggling over there. I, I'm still struggling. I just lost to the Falcons in the wild card. So I, I'm just I'm, I've had it. I'm in 2030. And you know what, Josh? You know what makes this even better throughout my seven seasons of playing this Madden game, where it's just all simulation, by the way. Dude, the freaking Kansas City Chiefs have been in the Super Bowl out of the seven seasons five times. They have six Super Bowl wins. They have six. It's it's now 2030. How have they and, been there five times and have six Super Bowls? It, it be it, well like they've had six like they've won they have six total super bowls so they're oh, like okay. nine time afc champions or whatever okay. it is so yeah. but like they have six super bowl because they just lost to green bay in mind they lost 21 14 to green bay with jordan love behind the center and then they like beat the they crushed the eagles like it, there's just like all this like ridiculous matchups and i'm like this sucks kansas city will be like ranked sixth seed and they'll go all the way through again and i'm like they don't even travis kelsey anymore they don't even have him like how are they still winning on that game i, I don't understand madden man i don't understand it so okay let's we keep getting off course and part of it's my fault part of it's your fault I'm ben frustrated. johnson washington who is their coach is Sam Howell the starting quarterback next year? We have so many questions about Washington. So many I, dominoes have yet to fall. I think I think we'll find out a lot depending on what Washington does in the draft. If they go after a quarterback, then it might be a game over for Sam Howell. But also, it could be a situation where they have Sam Howell start and then get ready for whoever to back to go forward with him. Because I think I think at a point you got to assume that Washington will draft a quarterback if they don't believe Sam Howell is the future. Yeah, I mean. There's some decent coordinators out there who I, the thing is Mike McDonald's a name that keeps getting tossed around, but they just fired a defensive a defensive minded coach in Ron Rivera. Do you go defensive minded again when you're trying to build an offense? You're also, you're trying to rebuild completely though. So, I mean, does it even matter? And I mean, people's, People said on the Raheem Morris video, like that's what the offensive coordinators for. They they can focus on that. But I mean, I don't know. It seems like the league's pretty nervous in general about hiring defensive minded coaches. Not a lot of defensive minded coaches have had a ton of success. I mean, if you look at some of the best coaches, they're all offensive minded at this point. Yeah, it's just it's a the game's changing. Game's changing. So. Defense wins championships? No, no, it's offense now. <laughs> it's offense now. Actually, I don't, I don't necessarily know if I believe that or not, but we'll find out. Let's move on to these conference championship games, okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Is you Carolina it. in it? No. Ah, uh, unfortunately, believe it or not, it is the Kansas. It was the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Baltimore Ravens, and uh, I have my thoughts on this but first of all shout out to drew tranquil from fort wayne indiana we went to the same high school led the kansas city chiefs in tackles in the afc championship game and uh he's been a backup but he's played a lot this season because the chiefs have had a lot of injuries at the linebacker position but he's been playing backup played phenomenal against the ravens um i have something to note but I want to get your thoughts first, Chuss. What do you? What did you think about this game? Um, I thought it was very uh, underwhelming. Um, I was kind of disappointed because I thought it was going to be more of like a higher paced game, just because Kansas City has had a pretty high paced games over the last couple of games. Uh, if that makes sense, because I just said games like four times in one sentence. Um, but they, they've they've had a lot of high powered offensive games. And I think Baltimore, like, you know, after killing San Francisco in the regular season, I figured, you know, Baltimore is going to be going crazy with these runs and these offenses and stuff. And I know you mentioned, but, but, um, but, you know, they were focusing more on passing and I feel like they were focusing, you know, they would focus a little bit on the runs, 
but um, things just weren't working. I don't know what it was. I mean, I know it was raining in Baltimore. Maybe that had something to do with it, but I feel like Baltimore just, it was almost like they shot themselves in the foot. Now, I know a lot of people are claiming referees and all that stuff, and I feel like in any game at this point in time, every game that you play will be determined and have issues with referees. There's going to be no game that anybody ever watches anymore in the NFL that's not going to have either a bad call in it, a couple bad calls, or the referees are going to get blamed. I mean, at this point, I've seen every playoff game has said refs. Team uh, team loses versus refs, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, maybe there were some missed calls, and I'm sure there were. Um, there was a lot of plays that they showed in videos and stuff that, that were kind of missed calls uh, for ball, like against Kansas City for Baltimore. And, and I do agree that they missed a couple of them, but... Um, but I mean, I guess it's nothing you can do now, unfortunately. But I, I really think Baltimore uh, just underwhelmed me. And I'm really disappointed because they were such a high power team. And I really thought that they were the ones. I thought it was going to be Baltimore, San Francisco. I really thought. Or, well, Baltimore Lions. I, that's what I thought it was going to be Ravens and Lions because I felt like both teams were very high powered offense. They had a decent, Baltimore had a great defense and De- Detroit had a decent enough defense. I, fought to, I felt to shut down San Francisco or just win by a couple. But, um, yeah, underwhelmed is basically what I'm saying and disappointed because, you know, I'm just um, – I, I don't really want to see Kansas City in it again. They're, they're building a dynasty, and um, the last time San Francisco and Kansas City played in the uh, Super Bowl, we had a crazy, terrible year, and I think that game is cursed. So I think it's going to curse us again. <laughs> so maybe, maybe the 49ers will win this time, and the curse won't happen you'd think you you'd hope there's just a large coincidence going on right now the united states is in an election year where the same two people are going to verse each other again 49ers and chiefs are versing each other again and final fantasy is making another remake of their game and it all happened at the beginning of 2020 and it's all happening again in the beginning of 2024 it's just unbelievable all i'm saying is i think there's a coincidence here i think we're in for another pandemic guys um or something crazy but um, I'm not no, looking forward to this game. Don't say that. I mean, I peaked during the pandemic, but I know Whoa. a lot of people didn't. Didn't I? I was living the life during the pandemic. I mean, I, I know I, it was rough I, for I a played, lot of people. I, I played video games during that time. Um, so I, I, I mean, I was too young to really understand because I was 18. So like, I didn't understand like the the money struggles. You know, people were having financial oh, struggles. Yeah, I'm 18. Yeah. I'm 18. I have a house under my head. I didn't understand the financial struggles. I didn't have a job. I worked so, in construction at the time, so I was essential. So, yeah. So but, and, and, and and a lot of my family were also considered essential. So I'm I'm very thankful for that. But nonetheless, i think the, the Super Bowl is is a curse. I didn't I don't want to see the Chiefs in there again. Um I think uh, I think arguably the best Super Bowl at this point in the last five years is gonna have to be freaking um Bengals and Ravens. I, or not Bengals and Ravens. Bengals and Rams. I think uh, Bengals and Rams probably has to be the my favorite Super Bowl that I had to watch because it didn't involve the Chiefs. Uh, then again, San Francisco, KC, uh, round one was pretty fun. I, I did enjoy that matchup well, in the first year. So we've got this AFC championship. We're coming into it. And you're thinking, like you said, it's going to be a good game. And we've got Lamar Jackson, supposed MVP. And... Uh, He's been hyped up, and he's been making some pretty good plays in the playoffs. He had a great game against the Texans, and I said, okay, he's not. maybe he's not overrated. I've been saying he's overrated, but maybe he's not. Then the conference championship comes. He's overrated, but he's not the reason they lost that game. He, <laughs> made, a, he made a stupid throw in the end zone into triple coverage to Isaiah Likely that ended up being intercepted, but I don't think he's the reason they lost that game. Let's look at the defense first. There were so many, like, just icky, like, gross plays on defense. And we've seen this all season. We've seen this. I mean, the Ravens have talked about it themselves. They've said, when you play the Ravens defense, stuff happens. And, I mean, Roquan has been known to do this. Jadavion has been known to do this. And this is just the way they play football. And that's fine if that's the way they want to play football. And there was a play that I think embodies this perfectly that I saw a highlight of. Patrick Queen, one of their linebackers, tackled Rasheed Rice from behind. 
But Rasheed Rice wasn't the guy who had the ball. It was Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey catches the ball. Patrick Queen sees Travis Kelsey has the ball and then turns and tackles Rasheed Rice anyway, just because, like, he can. It was the most random, like, as a fan, it was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go get these guys, knock them down, show them who's boss. But as a as a coach, you're like, dude, what are you doing? You could have gotten called for a penalty there. That's messy. You can't you can't be doing that. Then I think the, the whole offensive scheme was just weird as a whole. And that's the main thing I want to focus on. You have all season come into every game and said, We are going to run the ball down your throat. Whether it is with Lamar Jackson, whether it is with Gus Edwards, whether it is with Justice Hill, we are going to run the ball. And I had a stat here. Let me pull it up here. It is the the Ravens average 22 carries with their running backs uh, per game. They had six in the AFC Championship. Baltimore was 11-1 and one this season when their running backs touched the football at least 20 times. And they were three and four when they had less than 20. They had six against Kansas City. And so Gus Edwards, Gus the bus. It might have been the first play of the game. Very early in the game. He comes out. One rush, 15 yards. He's like, okay. Gus the bus. The wheels are on the bus. We're going round and round. And then he disappeared. We didn't see him. He finished the game with three carries for 20 yards. 15 of those came on one play. And it wasn't even like they stopped the run. Ravens just decided that they needed to prove Lamar Jackson could be a pocket passer for some reason, that he could pass the ball to win the game. But why do you do that? Why do you abandon your entire identity as an offense in the biggest playoff game to that point in the season? That makes zero sense. I mean, it's not like Gus was hurt. It's not like Justice Hill was hurt. You you just signed Dalvin Cook. They didn't want to use him. <laughs> you couldn't use Dalvin Cook. Nope, nope, no Dalvin Cook. Why nope. didn't you sign Dalvin Cook if your offensive plan was to make Lamar Jackson a pocket passer? Oh, moral support, of course. I was rooting against the Ravens, and it was annoying me. Uh, well, you were rooting against both, so I don't I don't really know what you well, were rooting Well, I was for. rooting against both, but I was like, if one of these has to win, I'd rather the Chiefs win. But why? Why do you do that, Chuss? Why what? Why do you completely abandon yourself? I, 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 me? I didn't abandon yeah. myself. No, I, didn't. I, I just cannot fathom. It is so – and it's the same – I'm going to say the same thing about when we get to the NFC game about Dan Campbell. Only it's it's going to be about how he didn't abandon himself. But why? It just, you know that your team is a running team, and you brought up that it was raining, which is even more reason to run the ball. Everything was pointing towards running the ball. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it prevents Patrick Mahomes from getting the ball. You control the time of possession. Yes, you can have Lamar pass sometimes. That makes sense. Have him pass sometimes. You can't just run the entire time, but run the damn ball. Yeah. I mean, I, I I agree with you. I mean, the problem was is I think they were a little scared at the idea that Kansas City just kept blitzing because I don't know if you noticed, but Kansas City would just constantly call blitzes. And if they kept calling blitzes, the run isn't going to work. So you're going to have to try to figure something out, which in this case was relying on Lamar to be a pocket passer and then scramble if the the line got too close to him. So and that's, I think, what they tried to do, but they didn't operate it correctly. I think they should have still tried runs because I still felt like Gus Edwards, uh, Dalvin Cook, you know, any of those guys probably would have been able to make it up the hill a little bit or up like up through the middle a little bit more than um I, I like nothing at all i mean they did well and i mean it's just a matter of like maybe they thought that it was going to be more or less like they're going to get blitzed a lot more than they uh you know so they abandoned that identity which is still stupid because i still think you know at that point might as well risk it he didn't see uh derrick henry and uh the uh and uh 
AFC Championship doing that. You can see him doing that. They still kept it with it, but uh, New England was just too much. Or not New England. Was it Was it New England? Kansas City? Kansas City, yeah. So uh, Kansas City was just too much for them. But, okay, if they were trying to run the ball and then the blitz was stopping that, that is one thing. That is an adjustment. That is good coaching to move away from that at that point. They just gave up. They just beat themselves. I don't even think the Chiefs beat them. The Ravens beat themselves. Yeah, a lot of people were saying they did that. The Ravens, it wasn't even, the Ravens probably should have won that game, but the Ravens chose to lose. I mean, let me make sure I get the score. 17 points. The Ravens defense only allowed 17 points in a playoff game with, against Patrick Mahomes. That is phenomenal performance by the defense. Because that defense was stellar. Kyle Hamilton was all over that game. And he yes. it just wasn't enough to get that freaking thing done. And I felt bad because Kyle Hamilton, I love that guy. I, I think he was a, like a great pick coming out of the that 2022 draft. Because Notre Dame, strong safety, I felt like he was going to be great. And he showed a great performance. And I was really sad for him because I kind of wanted him to go to Super Bowl and win a ring. But that's just me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I I don't under and I have I have a ton of respect for John Harbaugh as a coach and as a person. So um, the script the script basically said that uh no bo- uh, both Harbaugh's will not be winning a Super Bowl this year. Instead, they're going to give us humble Brock Purdy, which I don't mind that. Uh, trying to go Harbaugh? for their sixth Super Bowl MVP or sixth Super Bowl, not MVP, sixth Super Bowl. And uh, getting Mr. Irrelevant in there against Patrick Mahomes, chasing Tom Brady to be the GOAT, and Travis Kelsey with Taylor Swift. It just makes sense. Taylor Swift's going to end up on stage with Usher. It just makes sense, which doesn't really make sense, but um, it, it will. It will come Sunday, February 11th. Don't you, uh, hey, 2 plus 11 is 13. Taylor Swift's lucky number. Uh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm gonna say this. Taylor Swift annoyed me at first. She the, the amount they like showed her, it was annoying, it was stupid. I think they've dialed it back a little bit. Now I see more posts about people just like hating on Taylor Swift for like doing anything. People are like, she wore a Chiefs jacket at her concert last night. What a terrible person. I hate this woman. She's okay, ruining yeah. football. All right. Okay. Those and, people are more yeah. annoying than the people, than Taylor Swift is at this point. Well, the problem was, is I think people are just trying to now seek the attention of Taylor Swift and are trying to feed off of that. So I think what's happening is like, oh, she wore a Chiefs jacket to her concert. Well, the problem is, is if you've ever gone to any sporting or if you've gone to any freaking in the concert, a lot of these bigger name artists will wear like sporting related right. clothing. Like it, a lot of times it, it, it's usually to in the city that they're in. Like mm-hmm. uh, w- when me and Josh went to go see Morgan Wallen, he was wearing a Pirates jerseys and he was performing at PNC Park. Um, y- you see like Drake at in the wells fargo center in philadelphia showing up in a 76ers jersey it just it just makes sense i mean granted okay yeah maybe she was in uh indianapolis repping in kansas city jersey or a kansas city jacket okay maybe that kind of sucks because you know you're obviously in indianapolis i feel like it's kind of like a slap in the face it's like when post malone wore a wawa shirt to uh to the pavilion at star lake in pittsburgh i feel like it's kind of a sh- shot in the face because uh you know uh you know we're big sheets guy uh, big sheets over here over in the Western Pennsylvania region. But um, I, I think that, uh, I don't think, I think they're just kind of feeding off of that attention nowadays. I, I don't, I think they're just trying to get that attention in the media, anything involving the NFL with Taylor Swift, even if it's something as simple as her wearing a jacket. Um, you know, I think they look fine together. I mean, I think they look like like a nice couple. I really do. I think I was just getting frustrated with it because they, were, like you said, they were just showing showing her too much. And like you said, I think they dialed it down a little bit. Still got a little mad because they threw a touchdown to Travis Kelsey, and then afterwards they panned to the the suite again. I'm like, I don't really think they need to do that. Um, I, I think they should just let it go because I think in the end, celebrities are just celebrities, and we should just leave them alone. They they want to enjoy the game. But Travis Kelsey, if he scores a touchdown, that at least makes sense. Yes, it's when Isaiah Pacheco scores or Rashad Wright or Rash- yeah, Rasheed Rice scores a touchdown or something like that. And it's like, why are we showing Taylor Swift? What, 
or they did a promo for the Grammys and they showed her, which I guess she's a musical artist, but like, come on, like, don't just, she's not your little marketing tool, but I don't know. People are heated about it. I just wanted to put that out there. I'm not as mad about it anymore. Um, there I, some... I just, I just don't want to. I just, I all I'm asking for the Super Bowl is that it's just not the main focal point. Is that Taylor Swift is there? Because then it, that's really just taking away from the entire Super Bowl experience, and it kind of just takes away from the Chiefs in general. Because at that point, you know, it, it just kind of, it just like see because it's like, oh yeah, you know, uh, Taylor Swift's very big into red, and Kansas City is red, and because of that, Taylor Swift is now a fan of the Red Chiefs. And Taylor Swift is the face of the Chiefs. It's not Patrick Mahomes. It's not Kelsey. It's Taylor Swift. And I, I think that would frustrate me a little bit more because if if every e- if every other ESPN posts about Taylor Swift, then I'd be mad. But like, I, as long as they don't make the whole thing about her, because whenever it, it gets to a point where it's like, oh yeah, she's having a concert in Kansas City, go ahead, go talk about it. That's great because she's having a concert in Kansas City. Go talk about her on Live Nation i heart country i guess any of those social media platforms i don't even know if she's technically country at this point whatever she is pop um yeah you go go talk about it it's fine but like for the super bowl you want to focus on the players you know their strength their willingness to get there taylor swift like i said she she's just a fan up in the field or up in the suite she she didn't do anything she she just gave uh travis kelsey a nice kiss on the lips as a congratulations and stuff and maybe send him good luck some way somehow Taylor Swift cam bottom corner of the Super Bowl. We'll be watching everything she does at any given point during the Super Bowl. That's what I need. I want to if she eats chicken wings, I need to know. They should they should do a pay per view exclusive thing with it where it's like for five <laughs> for five extra dollars you can have a twenty a, a twenty or a uh, live camera of Taylor Swift's reaction. You can hang out with Taylor Swift during the super bowl and like you know how much money they, they would make? make so much money because would... then it because then at that point the nfl would be like oh we're not going to show it on the national broadcast but all the actual taylor swift fans would buy it like that only watch like the super bowl and the and like the kansas city games for taylor swift like you have all those people that are sitting there and being like i'm watching it because of taylor swift and they're sitting there like either with her or like have a live shot of her or whatever and it's just always on her you know how much money they make they'd be like oh my gosh yeah, taylor, oh. There'd be people who would just watch a video of Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Not even the Super Bowl at all. That doesn't even need to be on the screen. Who cares? We got Taylor Swift. And we got Jason and Kylie Kelsey up there, too, with Brittany Mahomes. That is the show. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's move on to the NFC Championship. Lions versus 49ers. My sister called it the Eminem Bowl. Um... So you got you had the Taylor Swift Bowl, the Eminem Bowl. Eminem went home sad after the Eminem Bowl. And uh, some Lions fans were kind of questioning Dan Campbell, uh, his decision on fourth and three. Could have kicked a field goal. Could have, uh, and I, I got into some debates with people about this. Against the 49ers, though, I think going for it was the right option. What I disagree with is passing i would have ran the ball because the i the lions best receivers seem to do best across the middle that's also where the 49ers defense is best and i understand jameer gibbs had just fumbled and i understand momentum and you're away and 49ers are got all the momentum and all that i understand all that Give the ball to David Montgomery or give it to Jameer Gibbs. I'd be fine with giving it to Jameer Gibbs because one play should not define him. And it was a bad handoff. It was on both him and Goff. But I'm not, as a coach, I'm not going to say, hey, look, yes, you made 100 phenomenal plays throughout the season, but you fumbled this one time and now we're taking you out of the game. But if you if you don't feel comfortable with that, give it to David Montgomery. Um. And this isn't something that is weird for the Lions to do. The Lions were stopped three times all season, fourth and three inside opponent territory. This was basically their version of the tush push. They went for it on fourth down more times than any other team besides the Carolina Panthers. 
And the Carolina Panthers, I'm pretty sure, only went for it so many times on fourth down because they were behind all the time. I don't have the breakdown for that, but eight, they went for it eight more times. The Lions were far and above the average, though. They had 52.5% fourth down conversion rate. Mm. So over, over 50% of the time, you're converting it. And you, I don't know. I get why people don't think it was a good idea. I really do. I really do understand why you're just like, just take the points and live to fight another day. But you've had so much success with this before. It would be like telling the Eagles to not go for it on fourth and one when they've had so much success with the tush push. If Dan Campbell calls it to go for it and they get it, he's a genius. He's an aggressive coach. It's what got them there. It's what got them to the playoffs. It's what got them to the NFC championship. I can't all of a sudden be mad at Dan Campbell if I'm a Lions fan and be like, oh, well, he needs to stop doing that. Well, if he stops doing that, then you've lost who Dan Campbell is as a coach. And if it was someone like Zach Taylor who doesn't go for it on fourth down a lot or Brandon Staley where it was just like it seemed like he flipped a coin on the sideline. It was like, okay, yeah, go for it. That's understandable. I get being upset with that. But going into halftime, they were surprised that he kicked the field goal going into halftime. They thought he was just going to go. He was going to go for it on fourth down going into halftime. Because that's who Dan Campbell is. I like the move. I understand that you can say that's why they lost the game. I don't think it is because there were a hundred more plays that happened during the game. Josh Reynolds had a bunch of drops. Brandon Ayuk had an insane like bounce off the helmet catch that was just luck. Um, but I think Dan Campbell made the right call because he stuck to his guns. He stuck to who he is as a coach. Uh, like I said with John Harbaugh, they abandoned their identity and lost. Dan Campbell stuck to his identity. Still lost, but I respect it. I mean, what do you, what do you think, Chess? I mean, I, I get your points, and I, I agree with them, and I, I like the idea of him keeping his, his identity, as, as you kind of mentioned, because obviously Baltimore kind of lost that during their game. But I, I personally think that um, – when it comes to Detroit, I really think that in some case scenarios, like I understand being aggressive is key, especially with this team, because that's how they've been all season is, you know, converting on fourth down and doing really well and whatnot. But I think the problem is, is um, in a situation like this, um, you're kind of, um, you're kind of at this, at the point in stage that you needed to kick a field goal, I feel like, they they really should have just because San Francisco is a team that comes back and once once you make one mistake it's over and and then we saw that it was like it was before you knew it can't uh, you know San Francisco was within within you know a touchdown and then uh, you know like they were only within a certain amount of points and stuff like that and we saw that throughout the game just based off of fumble recoveries mistakes and just different things like that so I think kicking the field goal probably would have been the more smarter of a decision just because. It's a safety and an insurance just because at that point, you just want to keep racking the points, especially when you're this close. You've never gone to a Super Bowl and you have a lot to lose by trying to go for it on fourth down. And like, yes, you're, you're being risky throughout some of these plays and stuff like that. And sometimes it is. But when you're versing the number one team that is the current favorite to win the Super Bowl throughout the entirety of the playoffs and probably the entirety of the NFL this season, most of the time. You don't want to. You kind of would rather, in my opinion, I'd rather play a little conservative at that at that point in the game than um than trying to force something because then that's when trash happens and that's what happens. And um, I I I think it was a bad move, but I see where you're coming with from it. But I think it would have changed a little bit of the complexity of the game. I, I think it could have changed it. I don't know what because you, you can't really predict how it'll change it in the NFL, but it might have changed it. Okay, well, I mean, and this is a what if, and we can do what ifs all day about this, but let's say hypothetically Riley Patterson misses the field goal. I think it was about a forty-five yard field goal. Um, well, then, then you would have then you would have been in the same spot. You would have. Yeah, but have. then the media is saying, "Why did Dan Campbell abandon what he's done all season?" and not go for it on fourth down. He's done it all season. They go for it the second most. 
Well, that that's oh, that, that. Well, that's called the media. You know, but I mean, the, that's he, the, he, those type of media outlets like they, they like to feed off of everything, and that's how it's going to be. No matter what decision you make, it is going to be questioned. Right. Because, and that's what's happening right now is it's being questioned why he didn't kick the field goal. It would have been the same thing if they would have lost because, you know, like, oh, maybe they were to kick the field goal, got the points and still lost. Why didn't Dan Campbell go for it? Maybe they would have scored a touchdown. Okay. He misses the field goal. Why did Dan Campbell uh, abandon his whole uh, mentality from the entire season? It's just how it is. It's just, it's just what they feed off of. I mean, that's just how it's being interpreted, but everything anybody ever does is just going to be how it is. So at the very least, if I go for it on fourth down and I get it, let's say I don't get a touchdown. Let's say the next set of downs, I end up on fourth down again. I can waste some time though. And the less time Brock Purdy and his Avengers have the ball that increases your chance of winning. T- don't so, tell, are you going to tell Kansas city that? You, you should email, you should I mean, email I mean, Patrick tr- Mahomes. But both teams, that's true with Patrick Mahomes too, though. I I think both, I mean, Brock Purdy was horrible in the first half. He was phenomenal in the second half. Though. If we, we know Patrick Mahomes is going to be good in the Super Bowl. We know Brock Purdy he, he should be, he usually is. But let's say, okay, I don't oh, get a touchdown. We haven't seen Brock Purdy in the Super Bowl. No, but I'm saying in his games, he's usually he's usually, he's usually good. Yeah, he's been in the spotlight for a while, and he we know what to expect from him. Um, but let's instead of five minutes now, maybe the 49ers only have three minutes, and I go into overtime, which three minutes is still a lot of time for the 49ers, but. I I just think keeping the ball away from the 49ers as long as possible, even if you're only going to come away with three points, that's the move. And that was the move here. But, I mean, it's a gamble, and it was a lose-lose situation. Dan Campbell wasn't going to come out on top as long as the Lions didn't win. Nobody is mentioning that Josh Reynolds had, like, three drop passes on on those late drives either. Yeah, like, straight that, was, to the that was tough. And the Jameer tough. Gibbs fumble was big. Yeah, it changed everything. It really yeah. did. That so, changed a ton. But everyone's talking about that fourth and three and saying Dan Campbell lost them the game. I don't think that's true. And I think there is a justification for him doing that. And I liked I liked the move. I liked that coaching style. I liked that he stuck to his guns. And you know he ain't going to get fired. You know he's not going to be on no hot seat. You know nothing like that just because of that play. I, I think that... Like you said, I, I think, you know, obviously I don't think it was smart, but based on the, like the mentality that he's had all season with going for it on fourth down, it makes sense. I just think that you shouldn't have done it in that kind of stage in, in the game. And based on being in the NFC championship against the powerhouse, potentially of the NFL. I can understand that, but I mean, it's like something. <laughs> I forget who said, I think Drew Garrison said it on Twitter. Someone was talking about how Zach Taylor needs to be fired. And I think Drew responded, you need to realize that Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor is much closer to getting a statue outside of Paul Brown stadium than he is to being fired. And I think Dan Campbell's in that same category now of you can question it. Cause he hasn't won a super bowl yet, but he's, he's a, the guy in Detroit, right? You think uh, you think Zach's going to get a statue outside? If Zach wins a Super Bowl, yeah. Think so? Yeah. Doug Peterson has a has a statue outside <laughs> of Philadelphia. With, yeah, with Nick got, Foles. We have yeah, a, yeah. me and me and my buddy Sean have a picture outside of it. I think they were both off the team before uh, the statue were, was completed too. They were. So, they were. I mean, statues don't mean everything, but I I do think Zach Taylor is closer to getting a statue than he is to being fired. Same thing with MCDC. But so. that's all I got for today. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think everything else in my uh, my sports, football, everything. Um, yeah, I, I was going to mention something from WWE, but uh, this is not a WWE podcast. So, um, but yeah, I don't I don't really have anything else to add. Well, Pat McAfee, he was in there for 38 seconds. 
Yeah, that uh, was pretty cool. Uh, it, it also sounds like he's actually going to be the uh, full time Monday Night Rock or, or uh, uh, commentator for uh, for the foreseeable future, because it, it or at least I don't know. It said uh, Paul or Triple H um, said that uh, he was going to be. Um, uh, he said in a, like a tweet or something, "It's good to have you back on Monday Night Raw as a commentator." So I don't know if that means he's going to be a full time commentator or what that is, but uh, that's that's really cool. So shout out to Pat McAfee. There is now two Pittsburgh represented uh, commentators in the WWE. Corey Graves, Pat McAfee. So that's kind of cool. Uh, shout out to Cody Rhodes for winning the Rumble. And, shout out uh, to the Yenzers. Shout out to the Yenzers. Shout out to Cody Rhodes for winning the Rumble, Royal Rumble again. Rest up CM Punk. He got hurt. And um, yeah, we're on the road to WrestleMania. And in between the road to WrestleMania is the Super Bowl. And that's... Uh, and what's then gonna... NASCAR. And the NASCAR. Daytona 500. Yeah. <laughs> America's race. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> sports Sports is just a fun time. I, I love sports. Because, <laughs> because towards the end of this, by the time WrestleMania is over and you know, NASCAR is underway and whatnot... Then you got hockey and basketball playoffs and baseball starting back up. You got March Madness in between there and March. It's just a great time to be a sports fan. So, Amen. And nonetheless, one more thing. Um, you know, I uh, uh, I think I think the only other thing we should add is just uh, letting the the viewer know about uh, the fact that you are going to be absent for the next week and a half or so. Um, so Josh will be absent again from the show for about a week and a half. I don't know if you want to elaborate on why or. You want to keep it yeah, disclosed. So, I mean, so. I, I told, I think I said before that I had a eye surgery. I'm having another eye surgery. Same eye. Um, but should be okay. That's tomorrow at like 5 a.m. But I'm pre recording videos, so I'm time traveling. I've got one on Willie Anderson and why he should be in the Hall of Fame. And then I've got one I'm still working on about Christian McCaffrey and why he will never win MVP and no running back will ever win MVP again. So uh, we got those two things coming. You can look forward to. Chuss is going to be hosting. I don't know what his plans are. If he's going to have Connor and his dad on or not. But uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know yet. Um, I'm going to kind of play it by ear. I'd love to have Stan on there at some point or Alvarado. Uh, awesome. Seeing yeah, seeing if either of them would want to come on. But obviously, I know both of them are very busy individuals. Um, Connor and my dad, obviously, I could pin down a lot easier than those two. But I'm going to try. We'll see. Obviously, we got this show up. We might fit in one more this week, obviously, though, with Josh having some videos he wants to post. You know, we might push it back a little bit. The only thing we really got to talk about so far is Pro Bowl, and I don't really think there's too much enjoyableness to talk about Pro Bowl. And then next week, um, we're, we'll, we'll give Josh the entire week off to rest next week as well, and then maybe we'll, we'll discuss some uh, – updates going into super bowl so but uh but josh will have some some time traveling videos out maybe i'll throw in some other videos in there too uh making some content i'll run through josh at some point but we're gonna figure it out but it's only gonna be temporary we'll be back on it very soon with both of us yes so with that time for the spiel Thank you for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube at No Butts Show. Our social media pages are No Butts underscore show on Instagram and No Butts Show on TikTok. My Twitter is Josh underscore Butts underscore 2001. And if you would like to reach us, you can email us at Bull Moose Podcast 2. That's the number two at gmail.com. Finally, our spread shop will be in the description, so check out the merch. Once again, if you enjoyed today's show, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, go do something nice for some.